Hey everyone, it's Jared here, and today is gonna be a really, really fun lesson. Today I'm gonna be testing out 14 drumming gadgets. I got my main man, Ross, on the cam. Go on, Ross, show yourself. Show your face. A couple months ago, I sent a list to Tyson. Tyson kind of runs the facilities here at Drumio, and I asked him to just get these drum gadget things. And there are a bunch of little things I've been wanting to test, and so I thought, why not just put them in a tickle trunk, a drumming tickle drunk, trunk, a tr tickle drunk, uh, <laughs> a tickle trunk, and test them all out right here, and I'm just gonna give you my first impressions of this stuff. So I might not like it all, I might like some of it. Um, sorry to you, the companies, if I don't, but I'm just gonna be honest, okay? Um, not everyone likes every product, and that's just the way it goes. So let's see what we got in here. Woohoo! This is an old lighting box. My apologies, Marilyn, since you have a phone call with Todd Suckerman in five minutes. Oh yes, I have a call with Todd in five minutes, or three minutes. Thank you, because would, that would have really sucked if I missed that call. So I'm gonna call Todd, and I'm gonna be back with you in a couple seconds, but it's a private phone call, so... Sorry, you can't listen. <laughs> All right, see you later, man. Yeah, bye-bye. Okay, back to the video. Okay, so we've opened up the Tickle Drunk, or the Tickle Drunk, and I'm just gonna choose something here and start figuring it out. So, the first thing I see is the Big Fat Necktie. Now, I'm guessing this is from the guys at Big Fat Snare Drum, and they created this thing for cymbals or hi-hats. Do you know, Ross? I think it's a simple thing. Would I use it? Probably not. <laughs> but it's cool. And I think it's cool because it, uh, if you do put it here, it's gonna stay there, it's not gonna really move around. But it's right in the way of where you, you're generally hitting. So, I don't know, it's up to you. Okay, the next thing. Spin ball, the symbol spinner. So I've seen these before. What I think you do is you take this and just basically put it on, I'll do it on my ride. Put the necktie up there. So apparently, the, from what I've seen of these, when your cymbal is spinning, it actually sends off different sound frequencies. Something like that. I don't know, I'm not a scientist. But it makes the cymbal sound a little bit different. Whether it sounds better or not, I'll let you guys decide. Um, so, normal. Now let's try and spin it. It's supposed to spin much longer than that. Let's try this. Let's take them off. Yeah, because it's tightening itself. Now we'll get them going. Does it sound any different? It 
like, no. <laughs> well, let's try, let's try. So, without. And then with. Sounds a little bit, it's, it sounds a little bit different. Well, you're supposed to like spin it and then you leave it for like the whole song. It spins for a long time. Yeah, and then you play. Okay, so let's keep this spinning while I check out other stuff. All right, the next thing is snare weight, the pioneer of expressive drum damping. <laughs> Hear that, Ross? Pioneers of expressive drum damping. So let's try without. Without the snare weight. And we'll try the small one. Sounds pretty good. It looks cool. Try the big one. super cool. Let's try the toms because they say it's a snare but that's kind of so no dampening. I like those. Next is sim pads. Okay, I think these are just like cymbal felts, colored, but they don't. Do they do anything? They're supposed to increase cymbal resonance. Could you eat them? Ugh. Don't eat them. Okay, let's try without the sim pad. with the symbol. Okay. So, I don't know. I think it's fine. Those are fine. I like how they're colorful. I don't think they actually do anything. I've seen some bigger ones they make that you could put uh, on the bottom. So if your symbol um, is resonating too much, maybe on the ride symbol, that's where I, I would see more of a use for it, but I don't know if it actually helps just putting a, uh, a foam instead of a felt below the symbol on the bottom or the top. But the bigger ones they make, and I've tried them, they, they are, they're good. This thing is really cool. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but it's, uh, it's basically just a quick release thing. I, I think it's made by Tama. And basically what you do here, if it fits on there, you just drop it on wherever and you let these buttons go and then it kind of holds your cymbal on. So instead of having to attach a wing nut, it's super quick to just put it on and off. Love these things. Switch kick. I don't know who's tried this. So the switch kick is basically allows you to change your bass drum beater really, really quickly. I need a drum key for this. So I'm gonna open up this, Evan's torque, or no, Evan's uh, ergonomic handle. It's just a drum key but it's magnetic. The magnet works. So I'm gonna take this off, put on the switch kick, make sure it's lining up. That should be a little bit higher. be 
be able to do is twist, turn that off. There's another beater in here that can change the sound. So this is a, a beater with a, re a really foamy head on it. And so then it locks into place. And you can change the positioning of it. So I like this because it makes it really easy and quick to change the beater. So especially in the studio, I could see this being really uh, handy to have because you can just quickly put on any beater, quickly put on any beater, quickly put on any beater, quickly put on any beater. There we go. Okay, what do we got next? Okay, we've got drum tacks. We've all seen these. I have them on there right now. Um, these ones are actually branded with Drumio. So all the guys from awesome guys from Drum Tacks did this for us, and it's fantastic. And they're available in the drum shop if you want. Drum dial. Okay, I get so many questions about this. A drum dial is basically something that measures the tension of the head and each tension rod, so you can evenly tension your drum. It's not actually telling you whether it's in tune or whether it sounds good or whether it sounds bad. That's something that you have to let your ears do. So if you look at it right there, you'll see 90. 90. Okay. Now let's look over here. A little bit tighter here. A little bit below 90. So what I'll do is I'll crank it up a little bit. So you see it went up a little bit more. So if it was way lower, look at that. So you can crank it up. And just to make sure that each tension rod is nice and even. So we use this, we actually use this in our studio. This is our personal one. It's actually quite heavy because it has a weight that pushed this pin down. And this pin is what measures the, the tension of the head. Now, a lot of you ask me whether or not I subscribe to these types of tuning devices or tensioning devices. And I think they're a great tool, but they're not a replacement for you really developing your ears. And so use them to kind of get the drum evenly tensioned. But even if it's evenly tensioned, doesn't mean it sounds good. So occasionally I'll tension the drum and then I'll crank one lug way down and it sounds better. So that's where you have to use them more as a guide rather than something that you're gonna like swear by every single time. Drum torque, the best way to tension and tune drums. Oh, we have a little bit of a battle here. Battle of the tuning devices. What is this? It's like a syringe, like a big syringe. Instructions, who needs those? So I'm guessing, put this on. Oh, and it measures how hard it is to, to turn. Let's try the tongs. So I'm guessing it makes it so you're turning each one evenly. It's not, okay now, so right here, no. I should read the instructions. Instructions, who needs those? Okay, the directions. Remove each drum tensioning bolt and lightly oil the threads and bottom surface of each bolt. Seriously? So let's just do it on this 10 inch. These are pretty much new drums, so I won't, I won't oil them. You're gonna cut a lot of this out. Okay, finger tight. Then they're saying this should be, let's go to five right now. Torque value of five. So then you could put it to, let's say, seven. So I want a little bit higher. That's a good way of evening it out. So now let's try something. Let's see if it's actually even. So that's 84. 
80. 80. Uh, 83. 82. It's close. So I definitely need to have more experience with this product, but I could see that the fact, now that I understand it, you loosen your heads, you basically turn it until it hits the desired torque. So you have to kind of experiment with it. For this tom, I put it to a uh, seven. And I didn't do the bottom head either, and it sounds really, really good. It comes with some attachments that kind of fall off, which are kind of, it's kind of annoying. Um, will, would I use this on a day-to-day -day basis? No but I know some people would like to use it. I don't use the drum dial either, but I know here at Drumio, we use it to try and kind of get everything really even because we're tuning so many different drum sets, right? And so everyone's different. You might want to try some of these out. If I were to choose which one to use here, I would choose the, the drum dial. That's just me. Okay, so the next product we're gonna try are these K brakes. Now I saw these a few years ago at NAMM and they look like they're in one of these packages that's impossible to open, so. I'm gonna need scissors. Jared, can I toss them like the office? Like toss the scissors just Oh, like... yeah, <laughs> please don't, please don't. <laughs> Whoa, dude, tossing scissors? Okay, so they have this kind of, these spiky areas on them and it's supposed to basically stop your bass drum from sliding on any type of floor. So let's see if it actually does that. I'm gonna move this off the carpet. Okay, so I have to Basically unscrew that. Can't do that. Instructions, who needs those? Simply unscrew the rubber foot from your current kick drum spur. Now, I tried them. I can't get the rubber foot off of the Yamaha uh, foot, so I, I'll try them later, but I'm not gonna try them now. So I don't know if they work. I'm sure some people think they, they have worked, but when I put them on the ground and slide, like, if I were to do it on this carpet, they do slide, but whether they work on the bass drum, I don't know. This? Ooh. This is kind of fun. Play that though. That is called, uh, for those wondering, this is called a Timber Drum Company slapstick. Cool product. Okay, let's try this. What is this thing? Symbo Mute. Ross has told me this is for wrapping around the cymbal, like so. So it mutes it. Easy to use. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, there we go, got it. works. It's probably a really cheap solution to people wanting to mute their cymbals. It feels like, it still feels like a regular cymbal as well. So for those looking to make their acoustic kit a quiet, quiet kit? If you're putting like those Remo quiet tone heads on your, your uh, drum set, get these and your whole kit would be nice and quiet. What's next? Low boy. Ah, beater. And look at that. Drumio. So the low boy beater, it feels like that's, that's either cork or it's just wood on there. I'll take off the switch kick. We'll hear how it sounds. Interesting. 
So I'm like super picky about the weight of the beater. I think it makes a big difference over how you interact with the pedal, your specific technique. Um, this one feels a little bit light. but it's still a little bit different than what I'm used to. I'm really comfortable with this one, just the normal felt one. And I believe this is why the Yamaha put that on there for weight, or whatever that is. Okay, last product. Move this up here. This product is from a guy's uh, named Bald Man Percussion, and it's called the Junk Hat. So basically it's it's what it sounds like. It's made of a garbage can lid and a piece of wood with chains in it. And it's supposed to sound like really trashy. So I wouldn't really recommend you ever use it as your main set of hi-hats. But you can use it as an augs. So I'll put the chains inside. It's kind of like Cookie Monster. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got something from it. Um, let me know what you want me to test next, what you want to see me get frustrated with and not be able to install. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll do more of these in the future. Thank you. See you again soon.